Thank you for the introduction. So welcome everybody. Well, thanks for coming to my talk. It's really uh, nice uh, that you're here. Well, my talk, uh, as, uh, as was announced, uh, yeah, it's about uh, speeding up your website. So, my name is Mike Reinhardt. I'm, uh, I live in Rotterdam and yeah, I really like uh, Rotterdam, it's my city. And yeah, I'm, I'm uh, about uh, making your website uh, faster. I like fast websites. I don't like s watching slow loading screens. So, <coughs> yeah, I started uh, when I was a kid, I always had a creative mind and I didn't make it to art, art school or an art academy, but always kept myself creative. And by uh, the 90s, I started fiddling in uh, GeoCities. Yes. I don't know if anybody knows about uh, GeoCities, all right. And eventually I uh, started building my own uh, web page. So my first web page online, Microsoft uh, front page. Anybody familiar with it? Okay, cool. Yeah, it was uh, fun times. Uh, at that time, yeah, we didn't really care about speed or optimizing for uh, mobile devices because there were no well, there were no devices to uh, browse the internet with. So we had a lot of uh, yeah a lot of creativity to uh, create all kinds of websites. And the internet then, web 1.0. Well, it wasn't. We didn't call it that way, but it was, that's what, what it was. It was one-way communication, basically one big information dump of yeah, web pages linked together via hyperlinks. So it was fun times, but uh, yeah, over the years I developed my skills from webmaster to web designer and eventually a web developer. And yeah, today there are yeah, millions of pages and a lot of devices that uh, yeah, we have to optimize our website for. And it's uh, very important these days that yeah, our website loads fast, especially on a mobile device, because we have to compete with billions of websites. So if you look at your uh, statistics, I don't know about your statistics, but if I look at my analytics, Almost half of uh, the traffic now comes yeah, from a mobile device. Uh, sometimes even more than half uh, that uh, yeah, people visit your, your website from a mobile device. So this was a statistic from 2016 from StatCounter. And uh, yeah, it shows that uh, mobile has over surpassed uh, desktop traffic. Well, especially on mobile, speed is important. And according to research, uh, it's uh, that uh, almost 53% of your uh, website visitors, yeah, they will leave your site if, if it takes longer than three seconds to load. So you could lose like more than half of your, your, your web traffic before yeah, people even seeing your site. So if you yeah, leave them waiting with some white loading screens, and don't show them that anything is happening, yeah, people will just uh, click away. <coughs> now, all this data is also not uh, unseen by Google. Uh, Google is paying a very close attention to speed. Last year, they introduced a uh, Google Speed Update. I don't know if you guys, uh, you probably heard about it. Uh, last week, there was an article in the news, news uh, that after this update, and until now, they saw that yeah, the average speed of web pages improved like 20%. So this really helped to, to speed up the internet. But still, yeah, it takes a long time for web pages to load. And according to Google research, uh, it takes uh, yeah, more than 15 seconds for a mobile site to fully load. So that's, yeah, if you think uh, about uh, people will leave your site if it takes longer than three seconds. Yeah, so that is way too long. And yeah, because uh, web pages are yeah, carrying a lot of weight and we've seen over the years that 
the internet has become heavier and heavier. We are loading a lot more JavaScript, images, videos. And the average web page uh, nowadays, yeah, I've seen uh, also figures of five megabytes or even more. But according to research, yeah, more than half is over two gigabytes. Well, if you consider that uh, the old classic game Doom, uh, which is a first person shooter with uh, 3D graphics, multiple levels, sound effects, is only 2.3 megabytes. And today we are yeah, still struggling to just put out a piece of web content in uh, the same size. So we still have some work to do. So all this uh, weight yeah, is really affecting the user experience. Uh, when we keep our, our peop uh, visitors waiting with loading screens, slow loading web pages, it's uh, yeah, affecting the overall experience. Uh, our web visitors, they don't measure time with uh, a stopwatch, they measure it with yeah, their brains, their, their eyes. So when they see a white screen, or things don't move, then uh, yeah, we get people like this so throwing their phone. Well, also the big companies, uh, they also know uh, yeah, this data. Uh, there are a lot of uh, reports. For example, Amazon, they saw, saw that uh, for every 100 milliseconds, their website loads slower. They lose like 1% uh, of sales. That's yeah, like billions of dollars. So yeah, maybe we don't make uh, billions of dollars with our website, but still, yeah, who wants to lose money? Well, you can find uh, a lot more reports on uh, this website. It's called WP, uh, WPO Stats. So if you ever want to yeah, convince your client or boss to uh, optimize uh, your website, you, you can find here a lot of interesting uh, reports on uh, yeah, what, it, uh, what kind of effect it has on, on sales, visitors, engagement. So, but uh, web performance, web performance is, yeah, not really a one-time one thing. It's like a continuous process. It's a journey that yeah, you continue on to monitor, optimize, and measure. So, and measurements is, in my, my eyes, that's really yeah, part of uh, web performance. So, before you do any optimization, uh, you want to start uh, with measuring. So find a starting point and see uh, what is slowing you down. So there are a lot of tools these days uh, that, you can f that you can use. Uh, all, of all of these tools are free to use. Uh, most of them are web-based. And they offer all kinds of yeah, interesting uh, figures, like uh, load time, pa page size, uh, Pingdom test is another popular tool among uh, yeah, the WordPress community. And web page tests, it's like the, the industry standards. Well, all kinds of uh, figures on how your website is performing. But all these figures, yeah, they basically tell you yeah, half of the story. They don't really tell you how, your, how fast your website feels in the eyes of uh, the visitor. So there's one uh, story about, yeah, for example, how uh, eleva elevators in the old days, uh, I don't know if you know the story, but uh, in the early days when in New York they uh, were building high rises and elevators were introduced, people were complaining how yeah, slow the elevators were. So, yeah, all kinds of engineers were thinking about solution to uh, speed up the, uh, the elevators, uh, which cost a lot of money, like uh, using uh, faster engines, all uh, to, yeah, speed up this elevator. But then, yeah, one clever engineer, he came up with a solution. He said, yeah, we don't have to, we shouldn't focus on the elevators, but yeah, we need to focus on the users, on the people inside the elevator. So what they did 
was a clever invention. It was to put mirrors in the elevators, so to distract yeah, the, the people inside the elevators. So, and after they put, it this, uh, put these uh, mirrors in the elevators, they asked the, uh, the people if uh, they thought the elevators were faster or not, and they said, yeah, these are much, much faster, and the speed was exactly the same. So that's uh, the story about uh, elevators. But uh, back to the web, yeah, how can we, yeah, can, how can we uh, get people engaged? How can we uh, keep them uh, focused on our websites? So, so the, mo the most important metrics for that to keep in mind is uh, yeah, the first contentful paint. So that's actually when you first show something on the screen that something is happening. You want to yeah, as quickly show something that uh, stuff is uh, loading up. Well, there's several other uh, metrics like first meaningful paints, but then there is also the time to interactive. So that's actually the time when people can start interacting with your website. So that's what we should be optimizing for. So where do we start with optimization? Well, we can go to Google and uh, type in how to optimize my website. We will get millions of results. And I, I think there are like thousands of yeah, tactics to speed up your website, backend, frontend sites, well, you name it. So I, I just listed here uh, yeah, 10, 10 performance tips. Um, yeah, I don't know all the, all the tips and tools, but uh, yeah, I know a lot. So I just thought, uh, let me uh, list uh, the top 10. So we will go through these. Uh, for that, I'm using my own uh, yeah, site project. Is the Miami Guide, well, I was talking to uh, Ian. <laughs> Well, Miami is my, one of my favorite cities. I go there every year and somehow I came up with the idea to uh, create a website in WordPress and uh, yeah, started a travel guide. So I go there every year, have my social media profile and yeah, it's a really fun city. So, but enough about that. Well, the travel industry is really a competitive uh, market uh, because there are lots of travel sites. But one way to, yeah, to win from competitors is definitely with speed, especially in the travel brands. You see yeah, a lot of travel websites that yeah, are really loading uh, slow and they are like using a lot of video, of course. So, but the first thing I do is uh, yeah, start at... Uh, a measurement in uh, Lighthouse. So Lighthouse is a tool that is uh, freely available in your uh, browser, the Google Chrome browser. So I ran a report and by the time, uh, at this time when I uh, yeah, measured my site, it was 6.5 seconds. Time to interactive. So what is nice about uh, Lighthouse that it uh, gives you also some opportunities that and you can use uh, to speed up your website. So when you scroll down, uh, Google gives you several optimization uh, tips. So here, they, the first tip is to defer off-screen images. So off-screen images is images that yeah, you don't see immediately above the fold. So when you visit the website, somewhere uh, at the bottom of your website, there can be images that uh, are not immediately visible. So by deferring off-screen, uh, yeah, by lazy loading, deferring uh, defer off-screen images, you can speed up your site. Well, one way to do that is a lazy way is to use a plugin. So I am currently using this one, and now yeah, it speeded up my site 3.9 uh, to 3.9 seconds, but. This was on desktop, and yeah, we are in a mobile-only world, so we need to optimize for mobile. Well, when it comes to web performance, you can start out with all kinds of uh, tweaks, but that's just like putting a band-aid on, uh, on something, and most importantly is to have uh, a good hosting platform, so a fast uh, loading server. 
with, with HTTP2, uh, there was a talk uh, this morning also uh, <coughs> talking about the advantages also for security-wise uh, HTTP2. Uh, HTTP2 HTTP is also a lot of advantages for performance, loading almost uh, yeah, more than two times faster. Another uh, thing you want to do is uh, run the latest version of PHP. Also security-wise it's important, but performance-wise by using, by running the latest version of uh, PHP, also it's a uh, recommendation in, uh, <coughs> for WordPress is to run uh, yeah, PHP 7.3, I believe, I don't know what's the latest version. So that can help you to speed up your website like three times. Enabling gun, uh, gzip on your server. So by enabling gzip you compress your uh, files and yeah, make it a small, uh, by, uh, it's compressing it to smaller packages so also you will save a lot on bandwidth. And a an CDN, so a content delivering network. Is everybody familiar here with a, a CDN? So if you have a website that's visited from yeah, multiple locations all over the world, uh, people will be able to access the files on your server much, much faster because they will be accessing it from uh, a nearby server. <coughs> Well, tip number six, images. Well, that's still yeah, one of the main uh, quick wins to uh, speed up your websites. So it's like the low hanging fruit. So yeah, a lot of web, web pages these days uh, are using images. So we need to make sure that yeah, we are using the right format, uh, right sizes, and yeah, that, that, that they are uh, compressed. So there is a guide by uh, Eddie Osami. He has a whole guide on how to optimize your, your images. Well, you can basically give a whole talk about how to optimize your images. So I really like this tool. It's uh, a tool from Google, it's called uh, Squash. It's a web-based app and the app itself is like 15 kilobytes, but it's really, yeah, compresses your images uh, really nicely. And you can select all kinds of different formats and it's available uh, yeah, right in your browser, so you don't need any other tools. Another way to optimize your images is to uh, use a plugin. So if you work with a lot of people, uh, like content editors, so you can install this and automatically images will be uh, updated when they upload uh, images to a blog post. So don't you, you don't have to worry anymore about optimization uh, for images. Well, number seven is uh, yeah, caching, caching and uh, compression. So you want to cache and compress everything there is on your website. So and by using a plugin, you can uh, easily. Uh, well, this is one of the most uh, popular one. WP Super Cache, you can cache your website. There will be also a talk after my talk about web performance and uh, he will talk more in depth about caching. So. And besides caching, you want to make sure that your code is uh, merged and minified. So when you normally visit a web page, uh, when you go to uh, and view the source code, you will see a lot of uh, white spaces between all the codes. Well, merging and minify combines your codes, it takes out all the white spaces and uh, <coughs> unnecessary characters and make the overall package a lot smaller so that it yeah, loads much faster, especially on mobile devices. There are plugins for every, everything on, on WordPress, so uh, also for uh, merging and minifying your codes, you can use auto-optimize. Well, besides optimize, uh, optimizing your codes, well, you want to make sure that you're serving clean codes. And by, yeah, what I mean about clean code is that yeah, you don't want to serve any code that is not being used or unnecessary. So, especially with uh, plugins, uh, 
Now, if you have plugins running on your website that uh, you're only using, for example, on your uh, contact page, but not on your home page, well, that's, yeah, that's still a weight that you're serving uh, to all your pages. So <coughs> there's a special plugin called uh, Plugin Load Filter. And with this plugin, you can disable other plugins not to load on uh, specific pages so that you only serve what is really needed on that page. And well, the final, uh, yeah, final tip is to uh, offer a valid code. So you want to make sure that the code that's on your page that yeah, has no errors. <coughs> you want to make sure that uh, your uh, style sheets, well, they load in the header and that uh, all your scripts are at the bottom of your web page. So otherwise you will get yeah, these messages uh, from Google that you are loading uh, blocking uh, resources. And also you want to check if there are no images that uh, are 404s, images that are not found. So you want to make sure that uh, code is validated. Well, after all this uh, optimization, you want to constantly check yeah, how, what uh, is the effect of your optimization uh, work. So at the time I checked, my site now loads in 3.8 seconds on a mobile device. So it's, uh, yeah, quite okay. You can go for 100%, but yeah, I wouldn't set it as a goal, but uh, especially on uh, mobile, it's if it is below five uh, seconds, uh, it's okay. So besides uh, optimizing, you want to make sure that yeah, you keep on monitoring it because yeah, your site is uh, really dynamic, uh, it changes. So um, it's important that you monitoring how your site is doing. So there are a lot of tools, uh, for example, Google uh, Search Console now also gives you uh, alerts if uh, several pages are slowing you down so you can yeah you will get notified and uh, optimize them <coughs> what you can also do is uh, set performance budgets so there's a tool uh, online that uh, how to calculate performance budgets to see how fast your site needs to load and then calculate how much weight uh, your page needs to be and also in uh, Google Analytics, they uh, now offer uh, yeah, the page speed score. So you have a nice overview of which pages are uh, slowing you down. So you can optimize them as well. And uh, they even give uh, suggestions on what you need to optimize. So Google really helps uh, a lot to uh, yeah, make our website faster. And how fast yeah, you need to be, it's, I think, really depends on yeah, like your competitors. So if you want to compare, if you don't know who your competitors are, well, there is the, this website, it's called uh, Similar Web. You just fill in your own website or as a competitor, it's also possible. And it will give you all the yeah, web pages that are uh, competing with you. So it's a handy tool. And then just check uh, how they are doing and make sure that yeah, you're running faster than them. There are other and more advanced tools. Uh, this is uh, Speed Curve. It's a really nice uh, tool to uh, benchmark yourself with uh, other websites. So uh, yeah, I used this in the past with uh, clients. So, but it's really nice to uh, see how you, where you stand uh, with your competitors. And yeah, you can make it a real uh, sport to uh, yeah stay the first uh, in line. So now that we uh, yeah basically talked about all the three uh, topics about measurement, optimization, and monitoring, uh, yeah this uh, is gonna really help you to yeah get fast and also uh, stay fast. So and I think uh, that's the, the most important thing of uh, web performance. So and that was my talk. Well well. Thank you for being here and if you have any questions. So I have some more tips on my website that you can uh, download uh, some guides.